body image is one of those topics that can be a little bit confusing and and probably a growing struggle in our society, our culture, and understanding what are some right uh, definitions of body image and how does Jesus see us and and what are some of those things that we pick up along the way that uh, are distorted, that get us off track, that take us into a space that uh, creates some dysfunction, uh, the way we see ourselves and the way we we even view food and, and, and our image and, and how we relate to the world, how we relate to God. Today, we're going to put some skin on the topic of body image and hear from a couple uh, friends in Christ that have walked through this and are walking through this so that we can hopefully provide some hope around body image. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery Official, a podcast that shares life change stories, courage, hope, and leadership wisdom, all centered around the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 and the Celebrate Recovery principles where Jesus guides us and provides tools for us to face those hurts that come from those events in our life that, that can create some nasty core beliefs that we get hung up with and ultimately some defenses, some protections, or what we call habits that can... Uh, create some separation and some strain with all of our relationships, including our relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with drugs and alcohol and perfectionism. My name is Rodney. I'm the Global Field Director with Celebrate Recovery. So good to be here with you today. And thanks as always for helping us get the word out about this podcast and sharing with your friends, giving us a five-star review and, and writing a review. Uh, I know that sounds silly, but it helps us to reach more people. And if you don't like what you're hearing, give us a call. We'd love to hear your feedback so that we can improve that. But uh, we've been, uh, if you listen to the the prior podcast, uh, we we did a conversation around body image and what is that? And, and, and is that me or is it, it just trying to understand that? And I wanted to bring on a couple friends to put some skin on this, their life change story, and have a conversation with them. They're both uh, trusted uh, friends and leaders in the ministry and and uh, uh, just around this uh, community and, and mean a lot to me. And they've agreed to courageously come on here and, and uh, share some thoughts with, in their hearts with you. So uh, welcome, Julia and Josh. Glad to have you guys. Thanks for letting us be here, Rodney. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Well, why don't you introduce yourselves and then we'll jump into a conversation. Okay. Um, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ and I celebrate recovery over a sexual addiction and I still struggle with lust, body image issues, and codependency. And my name is Julia. Hey, Julia. Julia. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with lust, codependency, uh, anxiety, and insecurity. My name is Josh. Hey, Josh. Thank you guys so much for for coming on here. So, you know, the prior podcast, uh, we, we kind of got into some of those characteristics, but what what are some of the things that jump out when we say, I struggle with body image? What's some initial things that just jump out that uh, come to the front of your mind in that? I think the first piece of that is I, I feel like something's wrong with me when I look in the mirror or when I just... I don't know when I go for a walk, when I go for a run or I, or there's some sense of comparison in that. And usually though, not so much comparing myself to anything specific, but I think to a lot of images that I have in my mind of what I'm supposed to be without really drawing or being very specific, specific about what that is. At least that's in my mind. And so lots of feelings of shame, lots of feelings of self-hatred, uh, lots of feelings of I'm not good enough, but I'm also not comparing myself necessarily to what I think good enough is supposed to be. That's at least mm, been that's my good. experience. What would Julie? You have? Yeah, I think similarly, it, for me, it's always felt like, oh, there's some standard that everyone else is meeting or doing, and I am not hitting that standard. Um, and so, which is so funny because I feel like body image issues, so many people struggle with so everyone feels like they're not meeting this invisible standard and so yeah I think for me that's kind of what comes to my mind yeah yeah on on the prior podcast we were talking about just a preoccupation with my appearance or negative self-talk a distorted perception Uh, there's some other ones that we covered but what what are some of the things as you're looking at the characteristics that jump out at you and, and as much as you feel comfortable as, as we think about the hurts, hangups, and habits, as we think about some of those core beliefs, that negative self-talk, what are some of those messages that you hear in the struggle 
with body image that um, kind of get us stuck. Yeah, I think of, so I know my, my step study was really helpful in unpacking this. When I was, when I was a kid, I was overweight and I remember being made fun of for that. And then I had what a lot of kids have. And I was in like fifth grade and I hit a growth spurt and then I got really skinny and I was also made fun of for that. And Mm. I just remember being 12 or 13 years old and looking in the mirror and asking my dad. And I was like, dad, am I going to look completely different when I'm an adult? And the question, the, the feeling beneath that question was just this idea of there's something wrong with me. And I really hope that something in the, just something changes about me fundamentally that I, when I look in the mirror, I'll finally be happy with what I see. And so far I've never really quite reached that, like being actually happy with what I see. Mm. And so I, I like what Julia said about this, this idea of comparison that, that kind of comes with this, because I feel like a, right along with that, there's this idea of approval of wanting to be approved. That's really attached to this. Mm. And I'm not necessarily approving of my own body when I see in the mirror. And it's taken a lot of forms since I was a kid, since I was a teenager. Now that I'm an adult, it's, it's gone through a lot of things and it's never led to this sense of being happy with my body. And I think that's been generally the things when you talk about kind of the preoccupation, the other thing is, are other people looking at my body the same way I am and really Mm. not wanting to draw attention to it uh, because it always leads to those kinds of feelings of insecurity that I have. Mm. Yeah, I think that's good. I, I think for me, kind of a lot of the core beliefs are that if I'm not meeting some sort of standard that this world has or this culture has around me, then I'm going to be rejected in some way or I'm not going to be accepted. And I think what's scary for me, like I don't think that I grew up with, you know, since I was really little, I don't remember just being made fun of a lot or had this, or I'd never fit the standard. This kind of like just hit me like in middle school where all of a sudden I was like, wait, is there some sort of standard that I'm not meeting? And it was like, I think there's a whole other level of like embarrassment too that comes along where it's like, there's something fundamentally flawed about me. And body image is is so insidious in that it so often we can't change these things about our body. We're not supposed to. This is how we're made and how God has made us. Um, But in some ways, we feel like we can tweak certain things or work out here or do this or change this or get surgery. And so it is this false sense of, I do have control over this and I can change it. So why wouldn't I, but then it's also fleeting because we can't change things. Or even if we can with surgery, something like that, we shouldn't like that. We, we shouldn't have to do that to be loved and accepted. And it's not about um, our body, like our bodies give us so much more like we can accomplish things and and have loved ones and experience touch that's loving and like we so we get so caught up in image and like this this quote-unquote beauty that we see whereas our bodies are designed to do so much more for us apart from that too if that Mm -hmm. makes sense yeah yeah it feels like there's like universal truths about everyone's bodies and what they're for and how they're designed And there's also individual things about every individual's body, whether that's your DNA, your chemical makeup, the things you're interested in doing, the things that you did growing up and that kind of thing, how that shaped your body. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of this failure to accept both universal, big, large cosmic truths about the human body. And then really like, I know I have a hard time just accepting truths about my own body and my own. The Olympics just ended. It's one of the Mm. craziest things about the Olympics is seeing different types of human bodies that are peak form for whatever their sport yes. is. And then somehow we get this idea that there is a, one. a peak form and mm. I'm supposed to be that one. And you look at an, an Olympic basketball player and you look at an Olympic, um, I don't know whether the sharpshooters or, or break dancers, yeah. uh, which are, which are, and those are different kinds of bodies, but they were peak for something. And they're all beautiful in their own way. Cause they accomplish something. Yeah. I think that's so true too. And it's, it speaks to, to, um, like the, Oh no, what was I going to say? I knew this was going to happen to me. <laughs> well, and, and, and I, you talking about the Olympics. I mean, I'm thinking about, um, gosh, who's the player from Denver? Uh, Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Jokic. So his stature, his look, and then you take someone like LeBron James, right? 
completely different builds, but incredibly gifted and and talented what they do. But you could look at one and go, oh, well, he's not really, he's not fit by our standards, right? And and it's just interesting. We were talking about this uh, off air, the, you know, even by cultures, and I can't even remember where he's, is he from? Um, Serbia. Serbia. Um, culturally, what is beautiful there looks completely different here. And even so, even defining that's beautiful, um, it's what lens are you looking through? <laughs> and I think so much of that's passive. Both of us kind of talked about, you know, middle school starting to suddenly feel these things that you can't quite articulate of what exactly you're feeling. And then you're comparing your body to LeBron James, who uh, <laughs> one is physically really gifted, but also has dedicated millions and millions of dollars to his own body. And you're yeah. comparing yourself to Olympic. There are mil- there. are millions of middle school kids that have watched the Olympics this year and suddenly made assumptions about their own bodies based on what they're seeing the world's best athletes performing in very specific sports, how, how it's supposed to be designed. Yeah. Well, and what I think is so beautiful too, is that every person's body does tell a story about who they are, you know, and we have all developed our bodies somehow, you know what I mean? Like whether it's, we were really athletic growing up or maybe we didn't, or even like if we're having a CR story, maybe we experienced a lot of abuse and we have scars or different things like that's, it's actually revealing something beautiful about us. Like we understand someone so much more and things they've gone through. There's like a level of intimacy there of being like, Oh, now I know so much. Like I see something physical on you. That is an indication of something hard that you went through um, or that the Lord has redeemed. And now it's beautiful. And like, we don't really think of that. We just think of, Oh, okay this is my body and this is flawed here or this is good here. And it's all telling a beautiful story um, that I just think is cool to think about that too. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's, what's some of the costs for you guys um, as you think about your stories and you guys are doing great kind of bringing us into um, peek into your life. What, what are some of the costs, you know, some of those things we talked about prior, you know, fluctuating weight, um, social withdrawal or in social settings, we might change the way we uh, interact with food uh, or being obsessed with kind of how we dress and, and, you know, how we look to, what are some of those things that real practical speaking that, that were factors for you and your story that played a part in how you, how you view the world and how you move forward with that? Oh man. My first thing is I started, <laughs> learning from high school football coaches in East Arkansas, what I was supposed to do to make my body better. And we have learned so much even in the you know decade plus since then about the human body. And so there's just this, I, I, these core beliefs that get formed really early about how I'm supposed to go work out and what the numbers, well, how much I'm supposed to be, uh, lifting how much I'm supposed to, what times I'm supposed to be making running. And it really on one hand doesn't give very realistic expectations for even the passage of time Mm. or what it's like to grow and work and have a career and have a family and have priorities. And I think the first thing I think of is priority lists change. If we have unrealistic views of our body, the things move up the list that probably don't need to be prioritized as high, whether that's, you know, perfect diet or perfect exercise regimen or those kinds of things. And other things get pushed down if we're prioritizing that too high, Mm. or there's the emotional cost of just looking at myself and in the self hatred. And it leads into, uh, I I know for me, those escapist behaviors where I'm just trying to pull away and find if, if I don't like my body, someone that um, that does, or someone that, um, will affirm me in those kinds of things or find some way to earn people's affection. Mm. And I think that's one of the core things I know I run into is just this kind of social cost of, am I good enough for other people? And how, if I'm not going to earn it through my body, how can I earn that Mm. through other ways? So performance or avoidance, whatever those may be, uh, those insecurities always find some kind of payout and, or our body or our souls or our hearts are asking questions. And then we're asking those questions in the wrong places. If we're going to, is my body good enough to answer mm, this for me? That's good. Go, go, Julia. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, I think for me, like one of the, one of the first memories I have of kind of, 
I think birthed out this struggle for body image issues for me was um, in middle school, I think, or maybe it was high school actually. Um, just, you know, I had a bunch of girlfriends and I think it was one of those dances coming up. I don't know if it was prom or something. And uh, I was, I really liked this dress that my friend wore the year before. And I was like, Hey, can I come try on your dress? I really liked it. And she's like, sure. Well, it didn't fit. And it was two of my friends that were there. And I just remember this moment being like, oh my gosh, like I hadn't previously struggled with like Mm. comparison at all. And then all of a sudden, like in this moment, it was like completely birthed out of it. And it was like, oh, am I, am I not meeting some standard that I didn't even realize was there? Like, Mm. am I broken in some way? And I'm, and I don't think that I really had anyone to like go to or process that with. And so I went to the culture, you know, and Mm. it's like how damaging that was. Um, And then all of a sudden it was like, I, this huge thing was birthed out where it was like, okay, I need to hit that standard to be accepted, which was not the right, you know, response, but makes total sense that Mm. I would have, you know? And so, um, it's just heartbreaking how many other women and young men who are still just having those moments every day of not realizing. Mm. I just think about how innocent and young our kids are. Like I didn't, I truly didn't. I remember saying like, I don't really know what makes someone beautiful. Like that was like a thing. And then all of a sudden having this happen and this whole world was born. I think it's just like the beautiful innocence of being like, everyone's beautiful. I don't really think about it is like really sweet. And wow. Well, so I think that um, it, that's interesting because you know, that's a great question as we're kind of thinking about I'm struggling with body image is at what what moment it's a great question to ask. When did you first learn that you weren't enough, that your body was not enough? And, and that's an event, right, that trying on a dress, very innocent yeah. situation Um it could be perceived from the outside. Oh, you know, what's the big deal? But to you, that was a big deal and it yeah. impacted you kind of sent you on this trajectory of maybe I'm not enough. Maybe what I look like, I'm, I'm too heavy, mm-hmm. not too skinny, whatever is not enough. And then it, it just, it can take one event like yeah. that that can spin us out. Yeah. yeah. It makes me think of any time, like you've gone shopping and you thought you were one size and you found out you were a different oh, size, devastating. just one way or the other, or the, the other mental image is like shopping as a kid and your mom, like make sure that like the pants fit. And you're like, I never want to come <laughs> yeah. to one of these places again. It's just this, it's this just feeling traumatic. of shame that it's comes so in when you are doing something as essential as buying clothes and that's yeah. back to school season. Um, I was talking to a high school guy yesterday. He's wearing a hat, took his hat off. He'd just gotten a haircut and he was really embarrassed by his, by his hair. It was fine. The haircut was fine, but he yeah. was just suddenly very, very self-conscious, even very you know, self-deprecating and the humor coming with that. But it was, it's something that just hits us in all aspects of life. Yeah. And I think we also just kind of learn how to roll with the punches of it and don't necessarily, or at least, I've learned to roll with the punches of it and move past that feeling because it's a terribly uncomfortable thing so painful. to sit with. It's really painful. Yeah. There's not a lot of conversations in the high school guys' locker room about yeah. how we're feeling about our own bodies. <laughs> yes. But that is a place where it is very much on display. When we're um, constantly comparing ourselves, right? I yeah. mean, it, it, because that's the way we're wired to, to notice people around us and we're constantly kind of sizing up our own selves and how do I match and do I fit in with, uh, you know, the norm. So there's an interesting thought just came to mind and I'd love to get your thoughts on this. So, so what do you say someone's out there and maybe they, you know, they're into fitness, they're into eating right. And how do you know when you've crossed the line, Mm -hmm. right? Because there's nothing wrong with exercising. There's nothing wrong. We should be eating right. We should be exercising. That's the way our bodies are designed. They need to, we need to get the heart pumping, et cetera. How do you, how do you speak into that to at what point? And we talked about this, the biblical view, what it is, what it isn't. And maybe we can get into that. When have we crossed the line in that? That's a really good question. The first things that come to mind are the, this question of what your kind of goals you're making and what the end point is for you. And I think this would just be some of the best advice you've given me 
Rodney is just to stay curious. And mm. one of those things I think in that space is what is my goal with my fitness, with my health journey and health being the, the normative term, I think, because there are aesthetic goals when it comes to fitness and nutrition, and those might be okay. There's athletic goals and, and those are totally fine and setting mm. kind of clarity of what you're aiming for. I think will at least help. And this is, it's important to have, you know, conversations with experts and people in your life that can say, you know, maybe that's an unrealistic goal mm. or maybe that's, that's a challenging goal, but I really want to support you in that. And how can I help those kinds of conversations where it's open? But I think the, the problem probably comes into is, is if the goals we're making in our heart are ones that aren't, you know, either biblical or human. I think one of the things that happens a lot in the fitness industry is it kind of ignores the reality of the human body. Sometimes our gyms exist or our fitness places exist to pretend like the human body is never supposed to break down. Mm. And while the, the biblical story is that it was never meant to break down, the result mm. of sin and death is that it does. Right. And so that requires a kind of readjustment and it requires Jesus to come and redeem that in our yeah. hearts and in our lives and the body's purpose to be redeemed. And someday it is going to be restored and made new, but that's not, that's not the work of fitness and nutrition. That's the work of the Lord. And so I think being really specific and being able to answer what those kinds of goals are would be something I would just have for that person. That's and good. I would encourage everyone to consider, you know, what are the health goals and are they healthy is probably the, the core question. I love that. Well said. Yeah, I completely agree with you of like, what's the why? What What's the true reason you're doing that? It could be kind of hard to figure that out, though, too. I think a practical um, just kind of guardrail is... Um, when you stop listening to your body, hmm. like if you are just having starting to have some negative effects for like if you can't get out of bed in the morning because you're just dead tired or like all you're so sore and you're just trying to go through anyway or like you maybe have been eating so few calories and you're trying to run and you can't and you just do it anyway. It's hmm. that's not listening to the needs of your body. Um, and I think that we have kind of lost the ability to listen to our body, even like stress cues, you know, am I stressed when I go for a walk or just do different stuff? But when we push past those things, if it starts negatively affecting our sleep or our relationships, are we prioritizing this above our kids or um, responsibilities that we have? Um, just anything like that. If we, if we push past and it does become a compulsion, Rodney, I know you say all the time, like compulsions are our head trying to do the work of our heart, mm -hmm. you know, and um, that speaks a little bit to what you were talking about, Josh, of what's the why, what's the real reason doing this? Are you trying to fill something? Mm -hmm. um, I think that the exercise industry does kind of go from zero to a hundred. I know that that's happened to me is, you know, like last year I was just like, ah, oh, I need to start working out again and like eating better. I've not really been good about this. And it touched that nerve, uh, that memory of body image stuff that was just kind of like lingering in the past. And it, I did, I went from zero to 100 and that's not, that's not a normal or healthy way to start doing anything. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't, we grow into it. We don't go into it. I think is what you say a lot, Rodney. Yeah. And and so I think that um, just recognizing those kind of compulsion um, signs. And then also like, what is the why behind this? Are you trying to fill something or is it truly for health, mental health and spiritual health? And yeah. it's all related. Yeah. It sounds, you know, kind of the mode what's my motive uh, behind that. Well, we're going to wrap up with part one right there and, uh, we'll pick up with part two at the next episode. Lots of good stuff. I'm excited for you to hear, but I hope this is encouraging for you. I mean, as we're just trying to put some skin on some of these topics and, and listen, you're not alone in this journey. And if there's something that resonates with you and, and you feel like you want to explore that and, and jump into this recovery process, then know that we're here for you and we'd love, and we'd be honored to walk through this process with you. So come check us out on, uh, on uh, Friday night, wherever you uh, find Celebrate Recovery, Thursday night, Wednesday night, Sunday night, whatever night of the week, just uh, jump in. Thanks for being with me today. I pray you'll join me next time. Until then, God bless you.